Welcome back to The World Over. Can lawmakers pull together a comprehensive tax reform package and pass a budget amidst the chaos caused by a series of natural disasters? Here with analysis is CNBC senior contributor Larry Kudlow, who joins us from New York. Thanks for being with us, Larry. Thank you, Raymond. Appreciate it. Now, the top 1%, Larry, pays 43.6% of federal taxes, and almost 45% of Americans pay no taxes at all. So who exactly is benefiting by this GOP plan to lower taxes for the middle and lower incomes? Well, um, just one correction when you say the bottom group doesn't pay any taxes. If you're working, they pay Social Security taxes. That's very okay. important. Now. Who benefits from this plan? Let me just make this point. Everybody is going to benefit from this plan. You know why? Because the economy is going to grow at 3 to 4 percent over the longer term, which is America's uh, natural rate of economic growth. This is exactly the right tax uh, plan, particularly lowering business taxes uh, for mm -hmm. large and small companies, which will help investment and productivity and wages. Everyone is going to benefit from this plan. And I can't stand all this stuff about rich people and rich people and non-rich people. Well, that kind of class warfare never works in the United States. Never but, works. But, but the president himself is raising, he's raising taxes on the upper income. These are the people who create the businesses and sustain the wealth engines for the country. So doesn't that retard growth, Larry Kudlow? Why do you say he's raising taxes on the upper end? Well, he said he said in he may plan, even include another tax category up rate. top. Well, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, look, there are a lot of options here. Let me note, by the way, for upper income people, their marginal tax rate, which is roughly 40 percent, a little right. above that, may or may not come down, okay? It may or may not come down. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't think that's the most important thing in this package, okay? I just don't. Mm -hmm. um, he does want it, President does want to abolish the inheritance tax, the so-called debt right. tax. That's going to help investment. That's going to help family businesses and wealthy people, okay? Um, he wants to get rid of the alternative minimum tax. That's a good move for everybody across the board in terms of simplicity and um, tax reduction. Uh, again, if you own your own business, uh, if you have a pass-through, if you have a uh, wholly owned uh, company, you're going to get a big tax break from about 40 percent down to 25 percent. Hmm. Public companies are going to get a tax cut from 35 percent down to 20 percent. Uh, Foreign cash, multinational cash overseas, will be repatriated at a low 10 percent rate. Investment by businesses uh, will be expensed immediately. I mean, it doesn't get any better than this, for okay. heaven's sakes. And you're not going to have a total reform package. We don't have time for that, but we have time for the essentials that will boost economic growth. And, Raymond, you know, if growth increases... Mm -hmm. Everyone benefits. A rising tide lifts all boats. Okay. I want to I want to challenge you on one point. The president wants to lower those corporate taxes, as you mentioned, from 35 to 20 percent. Here's the problem, Larry. In 2004, when this was attempted, many of these corporations, they brought the money back, they bought stock back with it, and there was very little economic in, uh, ingenuity or movement because of it. What's to stop that from happening again? Well, well, by the way, um, in defense of the Bush uh, tax cuts, you did have a five or six year economic rebound. That's point number one. OK. Point number two, I have no problem. I have no problem. If companies buy their shares back, then the shareholders get the cash and they will then invest the money someplace. They're not going to put it under mattresses. They may start new businesses with that. So why do we worry about such things? Now, mind you, this bill is much larger on the business side than anything George W. Bush proposed. And mm -hmm. I think that makes this a completely different animal. But why do I care? If I'm a shareholder, which I am, and you're going to give me the cash, then I'll go out and invest it. I might start a new company. I might help a new company. Who knows? Why, why is that important? Well, it's important because people want new jobs. You want new investment in the economy. I mean, that's the idea, to raise all ships, not to kind of have four people hoarding, hoarding it away in their safes at home. I mean, that's the fear here, right? Well, it's four people. 
You, you, there's no hoarding, Raymond. That was in the 1930s. People used to put cash under the mattress. That's not. That's a different era completely. Uh, I agree. Putting money in a mattress doesn't make any sense. I guarantee you, in this bull market, shareholders are not going to put their money under a mattress. That money is going to be recycled. As I said, think of it this way. Mm -hmm. You might reinvest it in other shares. You might reinvest it in the shares of brand new companies, right? Mm -hmm. IPOs, which mm -hmm. would be a good thing. Or you might give it to your brother-in-law or your uncle mm -hmm. to start a new company, which will employ people. But okay. the most important thing is we will be competitive with the rest of the world. Dropping from 35% to 20% is a 23% increase in incentive rewards. That's a huge increase. And if you believe in the supply side model and you think incentives matter and you're increasing the return on capital investment, which we need to do, then this is exactly what the doctor ordered. And by the way, let me add one more point. Oh, well, we'll add another thing, Lower Larry. Lower business taxes help wage earners. Okay. Lower business taxes, listen to me, lower yes. business taxes help the middle class wage earners the most. Roughly 70% of the benefits of a corporate tax cut go to the wage earners. That's an important factoid. That's another reason why this is a middle class tax cut. Larry Kudlow gets practically evangelical when he talks about this tax plan. Okay, I got to get this in. The Tax <laughs> Policy Center, Larry, they, they claim that this current plan will actually boost, raise the tax uh, uh, rate on the lower rungs of the income ladder by 10 to 12 percent. How is this helping the middle class? Well, first of all, ask yourself, is they, are they right? Right. The answer is they're wrong. OK. The answer is why they're using numbers from last. They're using numbers from last spring, which are not going to be the numbers used. We don't even know what the tax brackets are going to look like. Right. We don't even know yet what the tax credits. This is a crowd which purports to be bipartisan, but is not. They're the ones who slammed Mitt Romney's tax plan mm -hmm. unfairly. Now they're uh, uh, spanning, uh, uh, blaming Donald Trump's tax plan. This is not a group that can shoot straight. By the way, a much more honest group, the Tax Foundation, argues that 80 percent of the direct benefits, 80 percent will go to the lowest group and only 20 percent will kind of break even. The top 20 percent will probably have a little higher higher tax burden. The bottom 80% right. will have a lower tax burden. None of that matters. What matters is incentives. What matters is after-tax returns. What matters is take-home pay, more money in your pocket. This class, you, this class warfare stuff, Raymond, you got to get this out of your head. you got to completely erase <laughs> okay. this from your mind. Okay. Class warfare doesn't work. This is about growth. This is about growth, not redistribution. Uh, I told you he was evangelical on this. Okay, I want to switch topics for a moment. When asked about <laughs> committing to rebuild Puerto Rico this week, the president had this to say. Listen. We have to look at their whole debt structure. You know, they owe a lot of money to your friends on Wall Street, and we're going to have to wipe that out. That's going to have to be, uh, you know, you can say goodbye to that. I don't know if it's Goldman Sachs, but whoever it is, you can wave goodbye to that. Larry Kudlow, your reaction to the president's, it seems he wants to wipe the debt of Puerto Rico away. Now, Mick Mulvaney, his budget chief, says that's not exactly what he's saying. You would say what? I, I would say Mulvaney clarified this. Look, you're going to have, you've got bankruptcy laws for states and municipalities. Uh, you can't, I mean, you, you can't just forgive the debt. We have a Fifth Amendment, so-called the takings clause. Right. You have to remunerate people on defaults and so forth. Mm -hmm. I think the president got ahead of himself. What Mulvaney is saying, and he's a sharp-eyed budget guy, he's saying, look, we are going to provide as much financial assistance to bail out Puerto Rico's hurricane situation. That's mm -hmm. what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. We're going to do whatever it takes to get Puerto Rico back on its feet. But regarding their long-term debt problem, this is a badly mismanaged territory, very yep. badly mismanaged. That is another matter, and separate books are going to be kept between the bankruptcy proceedings and the emergency assistance. Who's going to pay for all of this, Larry? I mean, the Congress has a budget they're working on now, but between Florida and Texas and now Puerto Rico, that's a lot of bailout. That's a lot of natural disaster for one, one fiscal year. Well, look, this is a generous country. America is a generous country. And when these emergencies come, we do what we have to do 
to take care of them and get folks, states, municipalities, territories uh, back on their feet. That's what America has always been about. But let me add this point, coming back to your early assertions and mm. questions. Economic growth makes this possible. Mm. An economy that's not growing can never afford to help those really in need. And my point here is, think about tax incentives. Think about more investment. Think about higher productivity and wages. That's what gives America the strength to help in these terrible emergency uh, situations. And we have done it in the past, and we will do it again. Uh, give me your sense of this tax bill as you look at it, as it begins to take shape in the House and soon the Senate. There has been such a lack of coordination between the House and the Senate leadership. Is this tax reform plan or these tax cuts proposed by the president, are they going to go the way of the Obamacare repeal? No, no, I don't think so. I think you have a pretty unified GOP. I mean, remember, this so-called uh, group of six, mm -hmm. two from the House, two from the Senate, two from the White House, they've been meeting for many months. And they have already shown you a framework of what's going to come out of their final deliberations. So I think the party is much more united. I think there are issues remaining, some difficult issues. We will see them, by the way, next week coming out of the Senate Budget Committee. Very, very important. We need a uh, budget resolution, and that's got to have uh, tax instructions for a 51-vote reconciliation plan. So we don't know those details yet. But I think the GOP is really bound and determined to get this pro-growth tax cut through. Mm -hmm. uh, just before I let you go, the House voted this week to restrict abortions after 20 weeks of gestation, Larry. Uh, this now goes to the Senate. I'm already hearing from people in the Senate. It's going to be filibustered. It's not going to go anywhere. Why can't this, these the leadership in this party get its act together and move these things that are critical and important to their base? Well, look, I'm a pro-life guy, as you know, and I support the limits to abortion. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm completely pro-life. Yeah. Um, I think uh, life is conceived right, uh, right away, right away. Mm -hmm. uh, so I wish it would get through the Senate. I really do. Um, me, I would get rid of filibusters entirely on all subjects. I think it's some kind of 19th century artifact. It doesn't make any sense. That's a different uh, subject about legislative process. Yeah. Regarding abortions, I'm against abortions. I hope it passes the House, and I wish some senators would stand up on the floor and really support this. 20 weeks, even 20 weeks is too much if you ask me, Raymond. Mm. Well, I think a lot of people would agree with you. Larry Kudlow, thank you for being here. His book, JFK and the Reagan Revolution, is still available at bookstores everywhere. We always love having you on, Larry. Uh, you can follow Larry on Twitter at Larry underscore Kudlow.